Hello world, I'm Chen In, and in this tutorial, we're going to cover how you could use Snowflake Notebooks to gain insights and monitor your table storage growth trends. And so let's get started. So you see here that this notebook will allow you to track the size of specific tables over time in order to help developers monitor storage growth trends. Here's what we're implementing in order to investigate the tables. Firstly, we're going to retrieve the top 100 largest tables from your accounts. Then we're going to analyze the query patterns on the largest tables. And finally, we're going to identify which tables are users interacting with. And all of the content in this tutorial, you could find additional information in the Snowflake documentation. So, we're gaining insights from the account usage table and also from the query history. So most of the queries that we're be performing on will involve these two table views. So uh, please do check it out. And we're also sprinkling in Streamlit interactivity so that we'll have some interactive elements in the notebook. And if you're also interested in further enhancing your query performance and getting additional insights, we do have uh, two other videos in uh, this video series on the automated query performance insights in Snowflake Notebooks. And then we also have like a part two to the first video here where we kind of took some of the queries and then we added interactivity using Streamlit. So please do check it out on the Snowflake Developers channel. All right, so let's get started on the first uh, SQL query. We're going to retrieve the top 100 largest tables. So this query would do that. It'll sort by row count, including their size in gigabytes. And then we're going to also list the owners and last modification details. So this will allow us to uh, see in the past 90 days, which table are being accessed from our developers. Now let's run it. So it's loading up. So these are from the last run that I had. So it should get updated here soon. So we're essentially going to see data that has not been accessed in the last 90 days. And then we're going to sort them by size. And so these tables will serve as the basis for optimization. So here we have the fully resolved table names. And it's actually an aggregate of table catalog, table schema, and table name. And then we combine it as the fully resolved table name. And that will allow you to perform your additional queries much easier. We also have the last DDL, which is kind of like the day that the query was last performed on the table. And then we're sorting it by the row count. And we also computed the size uh, in gigabytes. And then we started that from the bytes information. And so here you're gonna see that we're only going to display table that has not been accessed in the last 90 days, okay? On to the next step, we're going to then convert it into a pandas data frame. So do note here that in the above here, here we have the SQL cell. And for the SQL cell, you could feel free to rename this to any other uh, name that you like. And do note that this cell name is equivalent to a variable. So you already have a variable defined by this name. And then you could call upon this from other cells uh, subsequently. So we're going to call SQL top tables, and then we're going to add append the two pandas uh, method here in order to get our data frame. And now we've got our data frame here. So exactly the same from above. Now we're hopping to section two. Now we're gonna explore a specific table from the above, and that will allow us to figure out the most common queries that are being used most often. So pro tip is you could interact with the below cell here and select the fully resolved table name you want to explore more in your account. 
So for my account, um, let's see. Let's sort it by size, gigabytes, and then I'm going to explore the first one here. So I'm going to copy it. And now I'm going to paste it into this cell. So I'll first have to run it. Okay, I guess I have to uh, import first. Alrighty, and now we're going to run it. We're going to paste the value here and then we're gonna press enter. And then we're good to go. The value has been defined in the selection variable. And in the next cell, we're gonna use the selection variable in our SQL query. So do note that this is the Python cell and then we're gonna use the variable defined in the Python cell in the SQL cell. And in order to do that, we're gonna use double braces here. So you're gonna see that we're using it in two parts of the SQL query. So let's run it. Give it a few seconds more. And so once we have run this query, we're going to get a list. And let's have a look at the next cell also. So this is the table that we're getting from the above. We have the fully resolved table name. We have the query text. So these are the queries that are being performed on this table. And then for your convenience, you know, for each of the query, you also have, you know, what is being done to it. So you have the query type, which is essentially, you know, like, is it an insert, a create table or select? And then we also have columns for uh, credits usage. And then also we have the maximum time that has been um, elapsed um, for the particular query. In the next, we're going to take the above here, the SQL table here, and then we're going to convert it into a pandas. And then we're going to uh, display it as a data frame using Streamlit. And then we're going to use the column config option from the data frame uh, widget here in order to make a progress bar column for the created usage. And then for the minimum and maximum value of the bars, we're gonna use the minimum maximum values defined by the column. So let's run it. So it looks like an ordinary table, but then let's scroll to the right. Awesome, you're gonna see that we have the progress bar here um, included. So if we don't have the column config, what will it look like? Okay. So it'll be just, you know, ordinary uh, numerical values here. And so by adding this, you have some, you know, rel relatively uh, nice looking uh, progress bar in the columns here. And you could also do the same for the other columns. So just, you know, just do the um, copy here and then replace it with the max elapsed time or average execution time by seconds as well. So. Feel free to play around with this widget. And so now that we have identified uh, which table and which queries has been used the most in terms of the storage size and also the row count, we're now going to identify which users uh, most commonly engage with these tables uh, by means of writing queries to them. So let's say that we want to take our most expensive query from above and turn it into a materialization. Who will be the users who are most likely to be impacted by our activities? So to find out, we're going to grab the list of users who queried our table of interest in the last 90 days, as well as the users who have executed the um, expensive query. We can then contact them when we make an update and tell them about improvements that we made. So first, let's find out who has used our table in the last 90 days. We already have a variable selection that we could use. So we're plugging it into the below query. So let's run it. Give it a few seconds. All right, and so here we have a table listing the usernames and the corresponding number of queries. So we're gonna see that Chenin, which is me, has 
uh, use this table the most in the last uh, 90 days here with 28. And for the next step, now let's say we want to materialize a specific long running query. Grab a query from the Pi visualization cell from section two. We can now plug it into the query text value below. So we're gonna run it here. And here we're going to go to Pi visualization. This is here, the cell. And then we're gonna, let me see, let me use this one. So I'm going to copy the first segment of the query, copy it, and then I'm gonna scroll down. I'm gonna paste it here. And I entered here and it detected that and we're good to go to the next step. So pro tip is if the query is too long, you could try a unique subset. So you're gonna see here that this is a unique subset. So I did not copy the entirety of the cell value. So I just copied the first segment here and it'll do the rest. So it'll do its pattern matching. All right, and so you're gonna get um, to the next step, right? So sweet, now we get a list of all of the users who might have run this query along with their total credit consumption and query execution time over the last 90 days. So let's have a look at that. Cool, so here we have the total credit usage, we have the maximum elapsed time of the query, and then we have the average elapsed time. All right, so feel free to modify, make use of this as your template in order to see which users, which tables, which queries are contributing to your credit consumption. Um, feel free to modify the number of days. It could, you could change it from 90 to 30 days or even on a weekly basis as well in order to optimize your usage. So I do hope that this video was helpful to you. And so all of the links to the uh, documentations mentioned in this tutorial will be provided in the video description. And so until next time, happy coding.